G'day humans, Chris Stead here. Today I'm reviewing the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8 ultra wide curve monitor which you can see here behind me. Now there's plenty to like about this monitor and if you've never actually had a curve monitor before, I tell you once you go curved, it's really hard to go back. I grabbed a curved monitor a few years back and I just love the actual curved nature of it. I find it's really good as a workstation, but also for gaming, as you can see here, and also for watching multimedia and that type of thing, just having it kind of curved in and facing you. So you're seeing the center and you can, it's all kind of coming at you. I find a really immersive experience. So I was quite excited to get this monitor. Now it's up on the pricey range in Australia here. It retails for $19.99, although I saw it at $15.99 on the Samsung website itself. Uh, before I did this video. So there's obviously a little, little bit of a price drop there or it's an overinflated recommended retail price. But either way, uh, that's still pushing it above kind of the Alienware MSI. We've seen a few monitors that are kind of like for like in terms of specs with this uh, that are a little bit cheaper. But as you'll find out as I go on, there are more features in this monitor, this Samsung monitor, than you'll find elsewhere. Now, uh, in terms of the actual screen, this is a QD OLED monitor, so that's quantum dot. Now this offers, well in theory at least, a brighter, sharper, um, more vibrant uh, experience than just kind of the base OLED monitors or base OLED uh, screens. Uh, but what uh, what I found, oh, I've been overly impressed by the brightness overall with this monitor. I've had it on maximum brightness uh, when I've been doing kind of basic workstation stuff. And that's kind of been more on the dull side in terms of uh, what I would have expected. So uh, potentially there's a little bit more pop to happen there. It's also worth pointing out that there isn't a massive resolution bump here despite kind of being this really, you know, a higher end screen. So you're still looking at that three, 440, 1440 uh, resolution, which is basically effectively 2K. Um, so it's not that kind of higher end 4K that we're starting to see on these 34 inch ultra wide curved models. It's starting to appear uh, a few places if you've got the coin for it. Uh, and I believe that the G9, I think is pushing in that direction, the next Samsung monitor anyway. Uh, but like I said, in terms of actual gaming features, uh, and just features overall, it's really impressive. So what you can expect when you get under the monitor is a stunning 175 hertz refresh rate, which delivers you know, real great performance, with, you know, the, especially with the motion that you typically get in games. And I've got a racing game up here at the moment, so you, I'll show you that in a second. Um, the refresh rate, uh, 0.03 millisecond refresh rate, excellent. Obviously variable refresh rate, it's, um, you know, it's got adaptive sync support, free sync, G-Sync. Uh, a million to one contrast ratio, so you're really getting a lot of depth there, especially with your blacks. Um, HDR10 Plus compliant. Uh, the color accuracy on this monitor is exceptional for this kind of monitor, like probably best in class, I would say. 99% DCI-P3. Uh, I think RGB is about 96%. So it's not the type of monitor that you might you deliberately choose to do like in-depth photo editing, that kind of thing. But for gaming uh, and a monitor in this type, very, very good. Uh, and you're also looking at the Neo Quantum processor, which is uh, uh, delivering kind of all of this and, and, and do the compression and decompressing and making all that contrast ratio and everything work for you in favor of the OLED. It's also smart things integrated with Alexa. Uh, and so you can actually sync your smart devices to this using, uh, if you link your Samsung account between your, um, your PC and your smart devices, and you can use Alexa to then do motion, uh, to do voice commands and things like that with your smart devices, for example, turn all the lights off and that type of thing while you're gaming, which is pretty cool. Also, interestingly, this is a smart TV, and this is where it starts to kind of vary from what you might say from a typical gaming monitor. So, as you can see, I've got it sitting on a game here, but it also comes with this remote. I'll talk about the remote in a little bit because it's not a great remote, um, but there is a remote, so that's something. And uh, if, you, if we back out to home here, you can see it kind of ditches the, ditches the desktop and starts becoming a smart TV. Now what's really cool is that this thing is connected to the internet on its own. It's not relying on my PC to be internet enabled, which means it doesn't have to be connected to anything to do this except the PowerPoint. Uh, and then you've got your access to kind of all of your apps up here that you might usually expect. You can just jump into Samsung TV Plus, which just has kind of some basic TV that you can just watch. Uh, and all of a sudden you can just jump in to say Disney Plus, which I set up um, Part of testing, I always use Star Wars. It's usually, you know, pops in terms of uh, 
the visual experience. What I have found is it's a little bit kind of uh, slower than if you were to just activate the app through other things. It just, as you can see here, is a bit of a load time than when I'm comparing it to things. So I'll just see if I can uh, get something going here so you can see, where's my continued watching? Here we go. So just Rogue One, Star Wars Story, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, and this can give you an idea of just what it's like to have a smart TV experience. Now you might be wondering why would you have a smart TV experience considering that, um, oh it's, sorry I just, I did, before this demonstration I turned on the gaming mode. Oh, see this is not working with the Sonos Era 1 here. That's the sound out of the monitor. Uh, but I, you can also just Bluetooth sync this to any speaker and I Bluetooth synced it to the Sonos um, Era 1 and I've seen playing my audio for general but if you want to play other monitor you can. Uh, now with the, obviously you've got TV, all these access to all these TVX on your PC browser itself. Um, so you might be asking well, what, what really is this offering but if you do do it through the apps that are on the Samsung device smart TV itself you are going to start getting um, Dolby Vision support so you do get a bit of experience. You can see here it's quite um, tight at the moment. I apologize for that. I actually had it set um, to gaming. Um, so you can just put this into um, zoom mode and it'll fit to zoom, right? So you can watch it full screen. Um, now, uh, you can dash out of this through the home to connected devices um, or to your workspace. I find it a little bit convoluted using this system. I, I, I've got lost in this menu quite a few times. A number of times I'll try to jump back to my workstation from this app uh, for this smart TV experience and it hasn't found it. I've had to restart to kind of reactivate the display port or things like that. So it's not seamless. Hopefully that type of stuff can be uh, sorted in the future. Now if I, um, no, so that's when you connect the device a different way. Sorry, if I go to the media here, that's my apps. Like I said, you can't just jump straight to PC. I wish you could just, there's a button on this just to go to PC. Connected devices, what I need. Down here, um, and I can just connect back to my PC, which should load us straight back into Project Cars 3. It all going well. There we go. So that's how it kind of jumps out from being a, a monitor that's connected to a PC into a smart TV. And that kind of um, synergy between the two isn't quite there for me. There's a bit of um, working out there and finessing. Anyway, it's a game monitor. So let's play some games. So. Uh, the one thing that's really, like I said, the color really pops in this LED monitor really pops. The brightness wasn't quite as exceptional as I was hoping it would be, uh, but it's still, it's still fine. A lot of people have complained online, I've noticed about this, this particular monitor or this particular uh, monitor screen, which is the QD OLED, which is also in its rivals. Um, like burn-in is obviously a bit of an issue with OLED and Samsung warranty is a bit flimsy on what you'll get from there from burn-in. So that's something to worry about games. If you play 12 hours straight or something with a mini map that's just sitting there, you know, you might see, start to see some problems there. Uh, but uh, people have also complained about reflections or the, the blacks kind of going gray or purpley in when you got a bit of ambient light here. So I'm just inside at the moment. Obviously there's a bit of light coming from outside that's natural. I've got the light on above me here. And I think you could probably tell that I didn't see too many issues with the reflections at all. I did notice the blacks getting a little bit grey in bright environments. Obviously you turn the lights off, it's, it's a different experience. Uh, but here you can see, um, I think it's actually not too bad at all. I can't, imagine, I can't imagine rooms too much brighter than this and it's not really a problem. So let's see this ocean. You can see kind of the, uh, this is Project Cars 3. And I chose this because obviously fast motion I'll give you an idea of just how quickly this monitor runs and how much it pops with the reflections and so forth. It's ray tracing enabled. Um, and hopefully I don't gum this up because I've never raced this track before. And I've just got the Xbox um, Series X controller connected at the moment. Um, and there's no sound because I'm running that through the Bluetooth speaker at the moment. But there you go. You can probably get an idea just from looking at how much this game's popping. And this isn't... Yeah, it's not Forza Horizon 5, but still a good looking game. So, it looks and pops beautifully when you're playing games. All right, before I write that guy's entire championship to oblivion. 
Uh, now, in terms of the design of the, of the device itself, I really like it. Um, I've used, like I said, I use curved monitors. Um, the LGs, for example, have this kind of big arc that comes out here. Uh, there's, I actually really like this stand. It's very, very sturdy, very, very nice. It doesn't rotate vertical, so there's no rotation or anything like that, but you can um, raise it and, and um, change the height and obviously the tilt as well. Uh, the buttons for it are on the back. So that's a bit frustrating. So at the moment you use this remote, and like I said, the remote's got some shortcomings to it. Uh, notably, um, jumping straight to settings requires you to hold down some buttons. There's not a settings button. Like I said, you can't slip between workstation and smart TV very easily without going out to the home and then trying to find it a different way. So there's a few things that could probably be improved there. It's also quite slim um, and white. So, um, Easily, easily lost and not exactly attractive, but it exists. Uh, but if you don't have that, the buttons to actually kind of, you, your typical like little circle buttons and stuff to go through the menu, they're right up under here and kind of hard to reach. So that's a bit of an issue. But the, the, the metal frame, which goes around the outside, the bezel, beautiful. Um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty light as well. It's not too hard to move around and everything like that. On the back port wise, you do have an HDMI port that's 2.1, so it's great. So you can connect an Xbox or a PlayStation 5 to this, and you're going to end up getting, you know, that good. You're going to make the most of your refresh rate. You're going to get, you know, all of that beautiful stuff come through. Uh, but it's a micro HDMI port, and I don't really know why they've gone with that route. It's just a bit frustrating. That's a cable you might not have, um, or you might not have in the correct length, and so forth. So it's just why not just do normal standard HDMI. Um, it's also got a micro display port as, um, on the back. Now the, dis the micro display port uh, that does come with that cable, but as you can probably see from the way that my cabling's here, that cable that came supported wasn't long enough for me to put my tower underneath the desk and get it down back across. Now depending on your setup, that may not be an issue, uh, but the fact that they've gone for a micro Display port means I didn't have my normal display port cable here, which was long enough that I couldn't just use. So that's just something to consider. It also has uh, two USB C ports in the back as well, which will, uh, and one of those can act as a display port. So you cannot just use USB C to go into the back there and turn it into a display input. You've also got over the back here core lighting with core sync, which gives you just a little bit of extra atmosphere. Um, as you can see, it's not very bright, but it does kind of make the back light glow there, and uh, it's kind of cool. Nice value add. Also, massive power block on this one. Much bigger than the power block on some of the other monitors. Take up a lot of screen real estate for me there, because again, the length of it didn't allow for me to put it underneath the desk and around it. Was, the cable was too short. So, small little design um, issues there, but you know, hardly a game breaker and maybe not even a concern for your requirements. Uh, so, overall, you know what? I, there's a, there's a bit of an asking price on this, and I think if you're just looking for a pure gaming monitor, look, the mo you know, it's really good with motion, it's really good with colors, uh, it's, it's, it's vibrant and fast, um, and that's what you really want from a gaming monitor. There's some gaming related features that you can access through the menu. In fact, I'll just quickly show you. Um, you should just be able to... So you can just jump into here and have a look at some gaming specific things. Virtual aiming point if you want to cheat. You can also make it so the blacks kind of come out as a, as a much um, kind of the brightness of the blacks comes out so you can see people easier. Uh, it's obviously various game settings as well, VR and that type of stuff you can turn off and on. So you know, that, that, type of, that type of stuff is, is really, really good. Um, so as a game monitor, yes, absolutely excels. Uh, as a workstation monitor, um, if you're trying to look for something that's a bit of a hybrid, uh, it doesn't really, it does the brightness and the pop to be really effective as a workstation monitor. And if your eyes are starting to go like mine are at my age, um, you might want to wait out for that kind of 4K resolution to get a bit more sharper on the text and so forth as well. Uh, but as a, the, the smart TV features, which is where you've kind of seen that price little bump up a bit, um, possibly not going to be that useful to you. So it depends on your use case whether that extra feature set is actually going to add the value that you may actually be paying for in the end. But 
you know, it is great to have that option. It is offering more than other monitors in this range are in terms of its feature suite. And so in that regard, you've got to give Samsung props and credit. Uh, some of the big things that these people are watching, you know, have issues with or concerns with in terms of like the reflections, the blacks just being a little bit dulled in bright environments and things like that. I didn't really notice too much of that. It wasn't a massive concern in my experience. So I don't think you need to be too worried about that unless you're really planning on gaming in a very bright, natural light environment. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8 ultra wide curved monitor. Bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Thanks very much for watching. I'm Chris Dead. Until next time, you.